Live from London, England, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host Youth Piscar, and you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Nutanix.next 2018 here in London. Might be a little gloomy outside, but uh, we're talking about clouds and talking about uh, developments inside. Happy to welcome to the program two of the GMs uh, from the Nutanix team. Uh, first to my right, Raghu Nandan. Uh, joining us a uh, second time on theCUBE is the General Manager of Virtualization and Management Services, and welcoming to the program first time guest and new to the Nutanix family, Nikola Bozinovich, who came from the Frame acquisition, is the Vice President General Manager of Desktop Services, both with Nutanix. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, thank All you. All right, uh, so Raghu, let, let's start with you. Uh, you know, I, I actually, I commented, listening to the keynote, there's a lot going on, and I actually felt it was underplayed, some of the things ha you know, happening in the core. If you talk about just an AOS itself, um, you know, the, the really super importantly named 5.10, actually had a huge amount of things. It was like a total rewrite. Uh, Deeraj this morning when he interviewed him, he said, yeah, you know, when you're flying the plane at 35,000 feet and it's going at full speed, you know, we're going to change the engines out. So let, let, let's start it's, there, it's, talk about your team and uh, well, you know, what's happening. Yeah, Stu, it's been uh, four years almost for me at Nutanix and uh, it's the, the pace never ceases. It's a thriving environment where there's constant innovation at every level of the stack. And uh, the grouping that we have now kind of done with the Nutanix core essentials and enterprise, where enterprise starts creating this uh, sandbox for a lot of the new tech and new markets and new buyers to kind of go find their own space, uh, that's where the innovation is happening across all of these layers. And the core has been pretty exciting between what's happening on Prism, on AHV, on just the new things around the autonomous extent store to drive over performance on the core storage stack to the next level, even as we make ourselves not just appealing for VDI, where we've really been a pretty good infrastructure of choice, but also to next-gen workloads, to cloud-native workloads, with the release of carbon, so it's clearly been a lot of activity, but with focus so that we never seize up on core, even as we evolve new products. All right, uh, you, you, you mentioned the VDI word, so uh, Nicola, let's go there. For those of the, that have watched the industry, we know Nutanix started out, uh, you know, VDI, desktop services, you know, one of the earliest and uh, you know, most productive applications. It was a good starting point to modernize your platform. Um, People sometimes poke fun at VDI. It's like, you know, okay, hey, uh, is, is now the year of VDI? Yeah. Um, I remember back a few years ago, you know, desktop as a service was, was it seemed a hot buzz. VMware made an acquisition in this space. Um, I kind of lost track of it for a little bit, but, um, you know, want, want you to bring us up to speed. You know, here we're yeah. getting to the end of 2018. You know, what is your marketplace? Because it seems very different now than it was 10 years ago when I started looking at this mess of an ecosystem uh, and bring us up to, you know, kind so of the cloud. There's one era. word that yeah. changed uh, desktop as a service and that's the cloud. Yeah. You know, when people started talking about DAS in 2010 or 2012 and Desktown uh, acquisition, I think that was 2013 or 14, that was way too early. You know, uh, AWS wasn't um, a, a common name and you know, Microsoft was just starting, Google barely had a cloud. And you know, we started Frame in 2012 with the, pretty much the same goal of hyper-converging software part of the VDI stack. As simple as that. You know, we, as a user, were uh, thinking and rethinking how that uh, VDI stack can look like in a multi-cloud world where everything should be working on top of different infrastructures, abstracting that complexity from the user, and, you know, yet providing them with simplicity and delight of a great user experience. And uh, I, I think like that um, in rods that we've made, that Amazon made like with Amazon Workspaces, that are right now a multi-hundred million dollar business on, on AWS. And the introduction of uh, Microsoft's uh, first party product, uh, Ignite this year, uh, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, I think it, you know, some, of the, some of these years are going to be you know, years of DAS. You know, whether it's uh, 2019, I, I believe it is. And at the same time, it's where these two worlds meet. It's the world of traditional VDI, where Nutanix has the best platform for enterprise VDI, and you know, mixing it with the cloud of frame. Yeah, I, I actually, so you, you mentioned some, some revenue numbers in there. What, what, what's the size of the market today? How fast is it growing? Do you have some data you can share? Yeah, so like, you know, just the overall market for VDI software, if you will, it's on the order of $5 billion. Where, you know, the today. three players, that was like number from 2017. You know, between Citrix, VMware, Microsoft, you know, and then some of the 
uh, new players uh, that I mentioned. The market's uh, projected to grow about 22% year over year to about $13 billion in 2023. So it's not growing triple digits, but it's um, growing uh, in a very healthy way. And some of the key drivers are desktop as a service, security, mobility, and hyperconvergence. So, you know, when you mix some of these elements you get uh, to see frame plus Nutanix as a, as a very potent, potent combination. So talking about that combination, right? So I know Nutanix from back in the day, nine years ago. And it was, you know, a VDI player, it was a nice box to run your desktops on. So now, you know, fast forward nine years, Nutanix has acquired frame. So how do, do these two kind of combine and mix within the new portfolio? Look, you know, we, we live in a world where everybody's working together and at the same time everybody's competing. Like it would be like, look at what Amazon's doing across the board, what Microsoft's doing, what Google is doing, you know, and I think that, you know, the, as Raghu mentioned, the speed at which Nutanix is moving, and I come from the startup world. My last 12 years have been in startups that I started, you know, from zero to about 100 people, and the pace at which Nutanix moves is just amazing, which was the biggest draw for me and the team to come in. It's just kind of, I like to say, kind of a almost accelerated for us uh, from the time when we got in. And it's kind of with that pace, it comes uh, kind of a new pattern where you know, you're going to work together with partners. I mean, Citrix, VMware, uh, uh, VDI is, is a great workload for Nutanix, and it's going to continue to be a great workload wherever it makes sense, and where it makes sense to have um, you know, a, a great multi-cloud product that is tightly integrated with the core, with essentials, that pulls in, as Dheeraj talked about at a keynote and on, a, on the earnings call yesterday, when it pulls in more of cores and essentials, you know, there is an option. And you know, the fact that you have Amazon Workspace, it doesn't mean that you can't run Frame or uh, Citrix on AWS. Same goes for Microsoft, same goes for you know, any other player outside the VDI. I think the critical thing there is the choice that's available for customers without having to make suboptimal decisions, right? So the choice that's whatever's best for your use case, and we will never force our customers down one path or another. AHB, for example, has grown even as we continue to support uh, vSphere and ESX, STO, and hypervisors on our platform. It's grown to this number of 38% that we disclosed on the uh, most recent earnings release. Not a single one of them was because customers were not presented with the choice of picking whatever hypervisor was the best for them. Right? Yeah. So, R R Raghu, uh, choice is great, but one of the challenges that leads to customers is when they get want to get their arms around the entire environment they have is, is the management of it. You know, hey, when I look at the industry and say, you know, how are you ha how are you doing with management of a single product, let alone uh, kind of the the heterogeneous mess that we end up with in IT. Typically, it's usually one of the the, the top hot buttons environment. Yep. So, uh, how's Nutanix looking to address you're, you're this? You're absolutely right. I think that's where Prism plays a pretty significant role. Mm -hmm. um, the this design philosophy that if something can't be done with a single click or single click in the context of you know one or two steps we should go back to the drawing board. Uh, and the great example there is what we've done with Citrix in the context of support for Citrix Cloud. Instant on, typically what might have been two, three different uh, steps across different consoles, you can just go do that from a single place from inside Prism. Uh, hypervisors, vSphere. One click hypervisor upgrades right from inside Prism without having to go to with uh, discrete management blocks, right? So the idea is that even as we provide choice, can we wrap that all under this one management uh, you know, overlay? so that we can abstract the choice. So you pick the product for its capabilities, but the management on a day two, day three basis is very abstracted for a simple generalist to be you know, able to use. That's great, actually, it's interesting. You bring up Citrix because when I think about Frame, Citrix has been a long time uh, Nutanix partner, especially in, in the VDI space. Uh, Frame have a relationship with Citrix? What does that mean uh, to kind of the ecosystem or does this cut Citrix out of the picture? No, I mean, it most definitely doesn't cut Citrix out of the picture. I mean, kind of that would be inconsistent with everything that we just talked about. Kind of frame was started six years ago, as I said, to reinvent uh, the technology stack on the VDI side and to show people what's possible. It's built as cloud-first product with multi-tenancy in mind, with role-based access control, security, microservices, containers, uh, all of these things that you know, were hard to do and were incredibly hard to do at the time when Citrix was inventing this category. And you know, making that transition is not easy. Like you know, running a six-year-old technology company and you know, needing to change something, you realize how hard must it be for someone who you know, has been doing there for for you know, a lot longer. So the reality is, uh, you know, we have new concepts every year, something new comes up, 
you know, the last couple of years it's been microservices, containers, you know, increased focus on security, and I think that's where we can move at really light speed. I mean, kind of, I, I'm, I'm every day amazed uh, with the velocity, and that's what, you know, gets me up, and, uh, you know, sharing that vision with Ragu, with the team, you know, across the board at Nutanix, at the core essentials and the enterprise level, is just, you know, kind of, I, I'm having time of my life. So talk to us uh, a little bit about, you know, you've, uh, you're talking about the improved speed of development. You can now do stuff you couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. So talk to us about, you know, the future of Frame within Nutanix. Yep. What, what's it going to look like? Uh, so again, three things that we're really focused on are this kind of multi-cloud vision, where from the single pane of glass, everything, you know, Amazon resource, Microsoft resource, Google resource, Xi resource, or your cluster should look the same. And you know, we can barely catch up with complexities of all of these clouds. Like, it would be unfair to ask an enterprise administrator to do the same thing. And it would be impossible. At the same time, there are great things happening, you know. Microsoft leads the way in some areas, Amazon leads the way in other areas. Kind of why don't give different customers the choice to use those things and eventually migrate them from one place to another, which is again something that uh, 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 we demoed, uh, Sunil demoed earlier, earlier today. So, uh, multi-cloud is number one, creating that incredible user experience, like that delight, one-clickness, everything's intuitive, consumer-grade design. I mean, that's the DNA that we share with Nutanix. And then having uh, all the right features. Like, you know, these days, all the who plays about security and uh, you know, role-based asset control, can you add your Okta in one click? Can you add, connect to your Azure AD in one click? And then finally, kind of it is security. And Frame, for example, was built from the ground up to support secure app and desktop delivery and to make those services secure. So it's the only FedRAM ready desktop as a service. So that means it is, uh, you know, uh, a dare right now in general availability for U.S., federal government, and state and local services use. Everything runs by default. And if it used to be a feature encryption. So everything is encrypted by default. Everything runs in FIPS mode. So every single component runs at the highest level of security, and then if things happen, things are contained. So those are some things that are impossible to do with legacy architectures. Now take all of that goodness and uh, converge that with the rest of the portfolio and think about the cross-product synergies. Like Prism Pro, for example, does a lot of right-sizing recommendations yeah. for VMs today. Are constrained VMs, under-provisioned, over-provisioned VMs, bully VMs, that can immediately apply to all of the frame provision desktops. Flow does a pretty good job of uh, creating these micro-firewall instances to secure ingress and egress routes for VMs. Now imagine that policy that when a frame desktop spins up in Xi, will immediately be portable, so makes hybrid invisible. So those are the and kinds beam of- And beam as well. And the costing on the beam and the economics uh, and the uh, utilization management on beam, so the cross product synergies of what's possible in the future are just endless. Yeah, oh, so Raghu, we heard from, from Nikolai as to kind of what it means to now be part of Nutanix. In your GM role, what are, what are some of the key kind of KPIs and metrics? How do you measure internally and report uh, out as to your success of your team? Uh, I think the culture at Nutanix is one where it's this uh, foundational in the builder owner mindset where you're accountable for the business and you identify are there uh, leverage points in which you go to market like for example uh, AOS does great in terms of hyperconverged platform and Prism Pro is a natural add-on for environments that need optimization choices versus these new products at the uh, tier of being Nutanix Enterprise, some of them have to figure out their own go-to-market, which might overlap with traditional Nutanix go-to-market in the context of Beam, for example. It's a pure SaaS go-to-market where you have to target a distinct buyer. So that's been the interesting journey of Nutanix for all of us GMs to figure out how do you create a blueprint of a three, four, five year plan for how the product needs to mature, target the first buyer, the adjacent buyer, even as we build these multi-products that have synergies between them. All right, well, Nicola, Raghu, thank you so much for all of the updates. For you, Piscar, I'm Stu Miniman. Stay with us for more coverage from Nutanix.next 2018 here in London, England. Thanks for watching theCUBE.